I just, you know, it came out in a public packet. I just. <clears throat> Good evening. It's in there. Yes. I'd like to welcome you all to the September 9th meeting of the Town Council. Could we have the roll call by the clerk, clerk please? Chairman McLaughlin. Here. Council Cogsall. Here. Council Groff. Here. Council Jordan. Yeah. Council Linnell. Here. Council McGinty. Here. And Council Reed. Here. Thank you. We're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And after the pledge, I'd ask you to remain standing, please. After the pledge, I would like to ask for a moment of silence that we remember Bobby Wallingford, Jr., who was a firefighter for the city of South Portland. He was on the South Portland Public Works Department. He was also an associate member of Cape Elizabeth's Engine 1. Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Oops. Okay, this time, <laughs> I'm going to turn the lectern around. Um, we have a presentation we'd like to make. This is dated June 10th. 1996. We apologize for our tardiness. This is recognition of the Cape Elizabeth Boys Lacrosse Team. They were main interscholastic Division I champions. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Boys Lacrosse Team earned their seventh consecutive main interscholastic Division I lacrosse championship, and whereas the championship ended an extremely successful season with 13 wins and but one loss, and whereas the team showed true sportsmanship throughout the season and an ability to overcome the greatest challenges to succeed, and whereas the entire community of Cape Elizabeth is proud of their achievements, of the achievements of this team and the manner in which they represented Cape Elizabeth, now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council in Town Council Assembled that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth High School Boys Lacrosse State Champions and we praise them for the honor they have earned for themselves and for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Dated, as I said, June 10th, 1996 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. We do have a couple of representatives from that team here tonight to accept this from the council. Unfortunately, a great majority of their teammates have either graduated and uh, taken off for future endeavors or are on the soccer team right now and are supposed to be at a practice. Gentlemen. Getting funny looks here. We have another proclamation for the Cape Elizabeth girls tennis team. They won the main Class B state championship last spring. I don't believe there are any representatives here. This, oh, yes, all right. Come on down, Ms. Newcomb. <laughs> we do have a representative. It's a tough time of year to get these folks, these young people out here. Thank you for coming. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth girls tennis team recently 
last spring, earned their seventh consecutive Maine Class B state championship. And whereas the championship ended as an extremely successful season with 15 wins and but one loss, and whereas the team showed true sportsmanship throughout the season and finished the championship title with undefeated matches, and whereas the entire community of Cape Elizabeth is proud of the achievements of this team and the manner in which they have represented Cape Elizabeth, now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council in Town Council Assembled that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth High School girls tennis state champions and we praise them for the honor they have earned for themselves and for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Dated June 10th, 1996 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Congratulations. At this time on the agenda, we have reports and correspondence with the Council. Council will now. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I just have a couple comments. The first one is uh, to just add my congratulations to the lacrosse team. Uh, it, this is one of those times I like to remind uh, everyone that I played lacrosse with their coach, Charlie Birch, back at Colby. And uh, as long as he keeps winning championships, I'm going to remind everyone that I played with him. Uh, secondly, mm. uh, the, uh, a little ad for the, the Cape Coalition. Uh, we're looking at um, uh, instigating, and uh, that's not the right word, uh, um, setting up some sort of a, a building where, or a room, uh, where uh, Cape Elizabeth youth can uh, hang out, as it were. Um, and uh, we, we are looking for some ideas and, and uh, uh, from the student body, and so uh, students that aren't here, if you're watching at home, uh, I encourage you to talk to Jeff Butterworth in the next uh, day or two at school. Uh, he's, uh, he's very cool, and uh, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, see what you think about uh, this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Reid. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, I would like to let the general public know that the application for the returnable container program is available at the uh, town manager's office. And just as a way of an update, uh, during the month of July, $1,799 was raised. And during construction, um, during the month of August, $1,717 was raised. So we thank the people very much for overcoming the obstacles and continuing to support the youth of Cape Elizabeth with this program. Also, the deadline for applications is October 1st, so all those groups who are wishing to apply, please do so and provide the documentation. And uh, my phone number is on the application if anybody has a question. I would also like to report as a member of the Cape Elizabeth Pool Study Committee that on uh, September 12th, uh, beginning at 8.30 in the morning, we will be interviewing three architect engineering firms um, for uh, discussions of the work that needs to be done, both the scope and the cost, uh, on the Don Richards pool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Coxall. Yes. Um, I just wanted everyone to know that three professional organizations have been asked to prepare proposals for the opening ceremonies of the Portland, South Portland, whatever, bridge. And that that, that pro, you know, the, the opening ceremony and um, celebration is, is moving along. That's the best name I've heard from her, probably. <laughs> As yet undecided. <laughs> Anybody else? Mr. McGovern? Yeah, I just wanted to update the town council on the project at the refuse disposal area. It's coming along quite well. I don't know if any of you had a chance to go up there today, but it, it is now, in fact, being paved. Uh, we've had a very good contractor, a very good relationship with the engineer, and uh, really everyone's been very patient and uh, appreciate that, and it's, it's ahead of schedule. I'm also aware that some of the councils may have received some phone calls uh, intimating that the level of the uh, roll-offs is not appropriate for the drop-off of material. Uh, we, we have, again, measured it, and if the roll-offs are generally the ones we're now using are 72 inches high, uh, the, if your pickup truck uh, backs up to that, uh, the average pickup has an elevation of 75 feet, thus leaving a differential 75, 75 inches. inches <laughs> thank you. Thus leaving a, a differential of three inches. 
furthermore uh, you know that does seem a little bit close and there are some folks that have uh, trailers that are lower than that and they don't want to bother to pick up and they just want to push things in and uh, we've spoken with the roll-off container company and you know they're more than willing to accommodate us with roll-offs at any different elevation uh, and most commonly they're, they're not 72 inches they're about 56 inches so uh, you know we're gonna start with the 72 if we have any problem with it we'll move to the 56 but it's not a big deal it, it does meet the elevations and uh, uh, it'll work just fine thank, right. you. thank you very much just want to remind people about some of the upcoming council workshops and an upcoming council meeting actually the, the workshops are on September 18th where there will be a joint workshop with the council and the planning board on the zoning ordinance ordinance rewrite committee recommendations we are continuing with that work on September 23rd there is a council workshop where we will be considering the library five-year plan public safety space needs committee report and the paper street study for those of you who noticed may have noticed an article in the Sunday paper about paper streets we do have a study we have identified 51 paper streets in Cape Elizabeth and if you're concerned about an area near you please be in touch with either the, the assessor's office or the town manager to find out if indeed it is a paper street and if it's coming up for consideration um, and then later oh, the the council meeting in October because of the holiday on there's a Monday holiday the council meeting in October will be on Wednesday October 16th that is a change from our general Monday meeting I am assuming all of you have received if you haven't get in touch with community services the community services brochure is out registration for that begins next Tuesday the 17th and Mr. McGovern didn't mention this, but we're very privileged to have Mr. McGovern participating in a manager exchange program. It means he gets to travel to Australia next spring. Which I think we're a little, little more enthusiasm. At his own expense. At his own expense. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of this month, we will have a visiting manager from Australia visiting the town of Cape Elizabeth. If any of you have occasion to meet this gentleman whose name is? John Torpy. John Torpy and his wife Tanya. Um, I hope you will make them feel very comfortable and greet them appropriately to Cape Elizabeth. We thank you. Next on the agenda is the minutes. We have minutes from two meetings, one held August 12th and one held August 28th. It's in order for a motion for approval of those. Council Linnell? I'm sure I, I approve. We, uh, I move we approve the minutes. Thank you. We have I'll a second. second it. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Questions, comments? All those in favor of approval? Six, seven, zero. <laughs> Sorry. At this point in the agenda, we have citizens' discussion of items that are not on this evening's agenda. Is there anybody who would like to take advantage of that opportunity? If so, would you please come to the lectern and give us your name and address? That's what I thought. You're all here for things on the agenda. All right. We do have a multitude of items on the agenda. I can't remember the last time I saw our three-page agenda for this council, but looking forward to moving through it and hearing from the public, also hearing council discussion and partaking in council action. Items number 58 through 71 involve roads, bike paths, sidewalks, and path issues. We have previously held public hearings on these items. I know there are people in the public who wish to make some final, you know, some further comments, I'll call them this evening. I believe that is appropriate to have that happen. Um, what I would basically ask at this point is comments on any of these items. And this ranges, as I said, roads, bikeways, sidewalks, paths. This covers basically the comprehensive look that our Pedals and Pedestrian Committee has taken for us and provided in their report. What I would like to do is ask for a show of hands of who in the audience is interested in addressing items Anything on items 58 through 71? 
Okay. Thank you very much. I'm seeing a good half dozen. What I would ask is that you come to the lectern. If you, I should have turned it back. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. <laughs> um, give us your name and address. Give us quickly what item, not necessarily the item number, but the topic of what you would like to address the council on. We are, look, as I said, looking at a very full agenda this evening. I would ask you to be concise, to avoid redundancy. If you know, somebody in line ahead of you has basically said what you wanted to say, if you just stand there and nod your head, we will understand. And, you, know, you don't have to talk if you don't want to. Once you get up there, just because you're in line doesn't mean you have to make a comment. Um, that's why I'd like to start this, um, asking that you take two or three minutes at the most, if possible, and then we will get on with the council discussion. So for the first number of items, 58 through 71, if those interested in speaking would line up at the lectern, we have found that helps move things along more quickly, and we will look forward to hearing from you. Yes, sir. My name is Gary Beckwith. I live on Oakwood Road. I have been a member of the P2 committee, and I would like to address uh, specifically uh, the bicycling issues that relate uh, primarily to Shore Road. Mm -hmm. um, and I will try to keep it short. Um, as a bicyclist, as a longtime resident of this community, I have seen uh, bicycling uh, increase tremendously. I have also seen traffic increase tremendously in this community and surrounding communities. And I can see the difficulty in the mix of uh, bicyclists and drivers. And bicyclists need uh, a space to ride. And I would speak uh, strongly in favor of the acceptance of the uh, state grant for Shore Road. Um, I understand that there is, has been a suggestion that a two foot wide uh, uh, shoulder be added as roads are improved. That's all right for experienced cyclists. It is not adequate for uh, intermediate cyclists and it is certainly very inadequate for adolescent cyclists. Um, I have attended meetings, hearings in Falmouth, in Old Orchard Beach, and in Scarborough, where such things were discussed uh, with the State Department of Transportation. The difference being there that each community had maps in front of them as to what was going to be affected, like uh, Route 88 in Falmouth. Um, the people who were concerned could see the map and could see the effect. And listen to the Department of Transportation engineers and talk about the variances that could be uh, affected. And if you notice in today's paper about the Route 88, the quote from the engineer, we've incorporated their suggestions into the design as much as possible. In Scarborough and Route 207 that is being paved with generally a four-foot uh, bicycle shoulder. I attended that hearing. The question from one of the uh, attendees was, uh, why are you doing this? The engineer's answer was for bicyclists. At the, uh, generally speaking, this is going to be a five-foot shoulder on both sides. Uh, at the Libby River crossing, which is about 1,500 feet, it's going to be reduced to three feet. 
because of wetlands impact. And in front of the cemetery that has a stone wall, they're going to pave over at the town's request to the cemetery stone wall to increase parking uh, for the cemetery. So they have made some adjustments. Um, I think uh, the State Department would do the same for us. Uh, if this grant is turned down, I think we will have a hard time in uh, financing any improvement. Being a, a member of various bicycling organizations, the ice tea money that funds this, and don't ask me to interpret that, <laughs> Uh, but it is the federal funding. Uh, this is under attack, uh, and these fundings probably will be reduced or withdrawn uh, in the uh, coming fiscal years. So I think if we have the grant in front of us, we would be remiss not to take advantage of it. And I hope that you counselors, in your consideration of this vote tonight, vote for people who are looking to the future in a way that doesn't always incorporate just the automobile. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beckwith. Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is David Wing. I live on Oakhurst Road in Cape Elizabeth. I don't need the bike lane. I ride a lot. I know how to ride. I've already spent six months in bed after a bicycle accident. The people who need some help are, as Mr. Beckwith pointed out, children, adult beginning to intermediate cyclists, and pedestrians, all of whom would benefit by a two-foot shoulder to some slight extent, but Four feet is a pretty narrow corridor for someone who isn't still in complete control of his or her bicycle. I would also like to point out that come wet, come dry, come bike path, come no bike path, there will be hundreds of bicyclists on Shore Road, as well as tour buses people who are not familiar with the road. And it's not a very, uh, it's not a very reassuring mix. I am not on the rescue squad, so I don't know um, what the current statistics are. I, I have been on the wrong side of a bicycle car interaction, and it wasn't a lot of fun. So I, I think that it would be a very good idea to take advantage of this opportunity to make provisions for bicyclists on Shore Road, and I would like to speak in favor of that. As far as two lights, there is already a pretty decent shoulder, and that is not a passage. That is an out and back. To use bicycling as transportation, it's helpful to improve passages, not dead ends. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wing. <coughs> um, excuse me. May I ask Mr. Wing a question? Certainly. Mr. Wing, if you could come back, please. Sure. Was your uh, bike accident in Cape Elizabeth? No. No, my bike accident was um, in Baltimore. And there's where they put the pin through. And there's the lift to accommodate for the 7 8 inch femur difference. Thank you, the sir. Thrill wore off. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Roy. I live at 51 Hillcrest Road. Um, I uh, hope you will vote in favor of uh, accepting the funds for the uh, Two Lights Road bike path. As far as the Shore Road project is concerned, <coughs> I have to admit to a fair amount of ambivalence. I've spoken in favor of that project in the past, 
Uh, on further reflection, though, and on weighing the priorities of aesthetics, of uh, the small town feel we're looking for, uh, just the whole feel of the road, as well as the needs of bicyclists, etc., cetera, um, I, I find myself uh, very ambivalent. And from that ambivalence, I think I'm here to speak in favor of an incremental approach. I think incrementalism is the key uh, to this. Um, I don't want to see Shore Road turned into Route 77. I have a uh, limited amount of faith in our ability to influence MDOT in terms of adjusting their parameters for how such bike paths should be built. Uh, I think that uh, regardless of what happens, um, well, first of all, let me just say that I think um, even if we go at it little by little and add somewhat of a two-foot shoulder, piece by piece, some sidewalks here, shoulders there, uh, that would be better than the current situation. I think whatever happens, however, whether we go at it incrementally, whether we do go ahead with a bike path, or whether we do nothing, I think one of the major things that should happen, which will cost us very little money, is to drop the speed limit on Shore Road. I think the current speed limit of 35 miles an hour in places is totally absurd. Uh, I think that uh, if you've ever uh, run, walked, or biked on Shore Road, as it currently exists, you know people are not going 35 miles an hour. They're going 40 and 45 miles an hour. That is not pleasant, nor would it be pleasant on a four-foot bike path. Uh, it doesn't make you feel any safer having some 17-year-old uh, come around a corner at 45 miles an hour. I think that uh, dropping the speed limit is the most prudent thing to do. If Shore Road is so beautiful, if the sight lines are so bad, if it is un as unsafe as most of us think it is, why are we going so fast? If it's so beautiful, don't you want to go slow and pay attention to what you're, what you're looking at? And I think that uh, we could conceivably drop the speed limit tomorrow to 30 miles an hour, even 25 miles an hour, and enforce it. Everyone here knows that when you get out on Black Point Road in Scarborough, you don't go one mile an hour above 25. Everybody knows that. That's the expectation. And we could do the same thing here. Now, I've taken to driving Shore Road between 25 and 30 miles an hour for the last several months. It adds minutes to that drive. But I think what it would add is a quality of experience to both those driving the road and those using the road on foot or bikes that I think um, would, and, and an element of safety that I think we cannot afford to do without. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roy. My name is Kit Liller, and I live on Little John Road. And I came totally unprepared to speak, but uh, you ask, and here I am. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm not too organized, but I'll see what I can do. Um, one of the charms of Cape Elizabeth, and you keep reading about it when people say something about it, is we try and keep it with its rural nature. Well, of course, that's getting less and less, but Shore Road is surely one of the gifts of this town. And I just can't envision in any way you're taking four feet of that, whether it's the stone walls or the trees, and coming up with the same charming road that we have now. There are other places to bike. If you want to bike Cape Elizabeth, there is Ocean House Road. There are all the neighborhoods where you're really not going to be in too much trouble. We have kind of population centers where you can ride your bikes. I am an athlete, so I'm not anti-bike, but I am anti-destroy Shore Road for what I think might be a small part of our population. This might be a question of uh, having a cause and going for it, but are you serving the interests of the larger population of Cape Elizabeth? Or is this a special interest group that has a cause and is going after it? And I laud them for that. But are they a big enough group to infringe on some of the whatever uh, of the rest of us? The other thing, if I lived along Shore Road, I would feel this was a great move against my privacy. You have now brought in <coughs> bikers and joggers, who I'm sure are of the highest. Nevertheless, this is a lot of exposure of strangers 
to these people that live right along the road. And using a government grant because it is there can never be a reason to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. I'm going to ask for no more applause this evening, please. And I mean the entire rest of the evening. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Marianne Lynch, and I live at 1115 Shore Road. I uh, also didn't really come planning to speak, but uh, I guess some of the comments that I've made previously have uh, made me sc scribble out some uh, things that I hadn't really planned to say. Um, it's not ro rocket science to say that Shore Road is not safe for pedestrians or cyclists. I really don't think this is just a cyclist or special interest issue. It is not safe to be a pedestrian coming from the center of town into uh, Fort Williams. The safety of Shore Road is further compromised by the natural beauty of uh, Shore Road. I uh, live right at the corner of Old Colony and sure, and I can't tell you how many times people are driving, looking off out at the ocean, <laughs> and not at the road where my children and I are walking along the road. So I'm here not really as a cyclist or as a mother of cyclists, but merely as a pedestrian who likes to get out and walk around with her children. And I would encourage you to vote for option B. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Good evening, my name is Ann Chapman, 77 Hillcrest Road. Um, I recently sent all of you a memo um, with a copy of an article that appeared in the September Atlantic Monthly that is very timely for Cape Elizabeth, pertains to how to plan towns, how to, how to get towns to be less strip malls and less, uh, you know, just get from here to there and not enjoy your town, back to m more like towns used to be, like Nantucket and all the places that that we all like to visit and think are so great. And I, the article really got me thinking about um, some of the things that are, that are going on here um, in terms of not only the bike path on Shore Road, but some of the town, town center issues, because I, I really think they're related. I, as far as Shore Road goes, I think it really is only a matter of time until someone is killed on that road and when that happens, there'll be a great outcry about it. And there'll be a lot of people sitting in this room and, and who are sitting at home tonight who are going to feel really bad about that. And they'll think back to how many people have said in these hearings that this road is not safe. For us to turn around at this point and do nothing or do something inadequate, I think will, will not serve us well in the future. We have an opportunity here. Um, to use federal money um, to help us with a project we're going to have to eventually do anyway, in, in my opinion. And I really think um, we would have the opportunity to work with MDOT to construct a project that will be satisfactory to people in this town and make that, that roadway safe. One of the things that's a little ironic to me in, in light of having read this article is on, on this agenda and through the zoning changes, we're, we're doing a lot to try to preserve our scenic views and to beautify our town center. But the irony to me is that, for instance, to see the view from Pond Cove, which we're trying to preserve, you have to, you know, go by it pretty fast in your car. Um, you can't really enjoy it walking along the road. But we're spending a lot of effort trying to preserve those kinds of things. And likewise, with the town center, we're doing a lot of sidewalk planning. But the vast majority of people in this town have to get in their car and go to the town center to then get out and walk around it. There really isn't an opportunity for all those people who live in the neighborhoods along Shore Road to, to get, get there safely, except in their car. So I would urge you to please do the right thing now while we have a chance to spend federal money, not all our own money, um, to do what's only right for not only our kids, but our elderly and everyone in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Chapman. My name is Henry Berry. I live on the Two Lights Road. 
I have for 35 years. It's interesting that uh, the comment is made that federal money is not our money. At any rate, uh, excuse me, Mr. Berry. I would like to remind the audience there is a town council rule that there will be no applause. We have I didn't mean to set off an applause. I just want. I'm not <laughs> talking to you because you're not clapping. Thank you. Uh, I have personally polled the residents who would be affected, the property owners and the taxpayers on Two Lights Road who, have, uh, who would be affected by this uh, Two Lights Road proposal. And they have all, except for two who are away on vacation, I couldn't get in touch with, uh, they have all signed a petition uh, firmly opposing this Two Lights Road proposal. It's a dead-end road, it's a straight road, and there's nothing to be gained that uh, uh, any widening would do. And one uh, uh, property there, uh, the, the lady said she was going to start selling hot dogs out her kitchen window. It was, it was a little uh, foolish, but uh, this would decimate her property. Not only, according to the diagram submitted by the feds that w has been put in the library over here for publication, uh, not only is the proposal to take four feet of blacktop, as I understand it, but also to widen 10 feet in addition to that for a total of 28 feet wide and wiping out trees and walls and everything that's in the path so that you can come around the corner and not see anything or not have anything in the way, I guess. That is just absolutely opposed by all the people who live there on Two Lights Road, who live there year-round, who pay taxes, and who don't want their representatives, because we don't have any representatives from the Two Lights area on the council now. But uh, when we did, uh, in, in the past, we've always been able to have a voice on the council that reflected the wishes of the people who live there and pay the taxes there and own the property there. And we ask you tonight, to vote in accordance with the majority of the people whose property would be affected by this awful proposal. Now, bicycles go up and down the Two Lights Road once in a while. This is the, uh, Henry Ford started all that stuff a year, years ago about the motor vehicles, and they zip by our house from uh, 2 o'clock, uh, excuse me, from, well, we're proud some at 2 o'clock, but generally at 6 o'clock in the morning on, there's a lot of traffic that goes by there, and they're going to go to work. People are going to go to work in their cars, and they're not going to have uh, slow down the traffic any uh, without enforcement for speeding, which seems to be the root of this whole bicycle and pedestrian problem. Um, it's interesting to me because I, I have a small law practice in South Portland, and I, I had a client until two weeks ago who was walking on uh, a well-marked bicycle path uh, for pedestrians with the white line. She was in inside the white line and she was struck by a bicycle and subsequently died. And I think that uh, this is uh, uh, what we can expect on the two lights road if this is uh, to be put into effect. And uh, I don't think that safety is going to be improved. And I don't think the people who own the property there think that safety is going to be improved. And they're familiar with that neighborhood. They want their quiet neighborhood preserved as it is. They do not want it all torn apart by the widening and bicycle path, the awful devastation to their property as property owners that would result from this plan. And so we ask you to vote against this. And we don't want the federal money. We don't mind bicycles coming by our yard, but we don't want to have that property taken for the sake of a few bicycles. And they don't come by very often in February. And we live there all year round. So we ask you not to go forward on two lights road with this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berry. My name is Eric Messerschmidt, and I live at 39 Longfellow Drive. And um, I'm 15 years old. And I don't have a driver's license. And my only form of transportation is bicycles. And I really don't think it's fair that um, the only people who can enjoy Shore Road are those with cars. And I urge everyone who is against this to take a walk on Shore Road and then tell me it's safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. I'm Howard Littlefield. I live at 6 Lawson Road, which is on the corner of Shore Road and Lawson Road. Uh, 
My first concern is that uh, Lawson Road be included in with the drainage project, the Tides Edge Road, that uh, it's tied in together. My second thing is uh, on Shaw Road, my neighborhood has 20, 23 kids, the majority of them are between four and seven years old. And they all have their training wheels off and are able to ride bikes pretty much now. There is no place to go from Lawson Road to get to, over to Old Colony or down to Fort Williams without going on Shore Road. I have an 85-year-old neighbor that regularly walks from Lawson Road to the center of town and back twice a day. I have four or five runners that are first-class runners, and they run every day on Shore Road, and there's no reason safety can't be put ahead of the beauty of the road. And I've cleaned up my side of the road. It was all bushes at one time, and it looks a lot better now than it did when I moved there 18 years ago. And I think you can improve the whole beauty of Shaw Road by adding four feet on each side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Littlefield. Hello. My name is Richard Berman. I live at 1021 Shaw Road. And I am very much in favor of bikeways and walkways for children along Shore Road, appropriate ones, um, such as a sidewalk or a separated path. I do not consider four foot widening, widening of the road, nor do I consider two foot widening of the road um, an appropriate way to serve children. I believe that it will be a da cause a dangerous situation. I believe any widening of Shore Road, whether it be four feet or two feet, will tend to increase the speed of traffic on Shore Road. Shore Road is dangerous, but there's not many, many accidents that have uh, occurred along Shore Road. And you wonder, I wonder about that. Right now, we realize that it's dangerous. We don't allow our kids to go out there. Um, and we're very cautious when we use it. Um, the traffic actually isn't as fast as everybody thinks. There's not many reports of speeding along Shore Road. Um, people tend to go about five miles over the speed limit. By the way, I'm in favor of lowering the speed limit. But they can't go much faster because it is narrow. It's not a wide road. Uh, my fear is that any widening of that road will make it easier to go faster, will create a, an attractive nuisance, and create a lot of liability for the town. I don't want to see any kids get uh, uh, killed on Shore Road. That's why I keep lobbying for a, an appropriate path, whether it be a sidewalk or a separated thing. It sh we shouldn't encourage our kids to go anywhere along Shore Road unless it's separated from Shore Road by a curb or a separation. I noticed, uh, in, just in conclusion, I, I did take a chance to, to look at this uh, P2 committee uh, report. They really did a yeoman's job. Uh, you know, I think they all deserve a, a lot of credit. Obviously, there's a lot of meetings. There's a lot of work done here. In this report, they came to the conclusion that there should not be widening on, of Shore Road, either by four feet or by two feet. The four foot was defeated, I think, by one vote. The two feet was defeated, again, by more than that. So the P2 committee has recommended against any widening of Shore Road. And in conclusion, I'll just go back to the 93 comprehensive plan under roads and transportation. And this, this is, a, again, this is a, a lot of people in the town work very hard and put a lot of thought into this. And I think they deserve a lot of credit. Under that, on page 45, it talks about residential development is placing increasing demands on Mitchell and Shore Road. Recent development has further strained these narrow, curving roads' capacity to handle traffic. The aesthetic character of these roads, however, would be greatly harmed if street widening or straightening were to occur. And if you look at their recommendations, one of them was to reduce the traveled way and shoulder width standards for all roads except for arterial roads, to eliminate the town standard that requires the entire road of right of way be cleared of trees and vegetation. So in the comprehensive plan, they were going the other way. You know, and it's true. If, uh, we've got a beautiful road there now. Um, we haven't had a lot of accidents because we know not to send our kids out on it. So I, I urge you not to widen it. It'll just bring tour buses, 
more traffic and cause more problems. And I say, let's keep going. Let's keep trying to get a proper uh, bikeway, multi-use path for the children of this town. The only people that should use a four-foot or even a two-foot, a two-foot or a four-foot, are adult bikers, experienced bikers. It will not serve the children of this town. I urge you not to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Hi, I'm Carol Haas. I live at 6 Loxley Road. Um, I'm in favor of bike paths through the town. I recognize the need for people to be able to get from Fort Williams down to the town center. I don't think Shore Road will ever be a safe way for them to do that. I think if we widen Shore Road, um, we will still have a dangerous road, and it will actually encourage people to ride their bikes there, and I think that that is compromising their safety and is a really unwise thing to do. Um, under item 68, Greenbelt facilities, um, mention is made of the P2 committee's um, recommendation that the town should acquire the easements to, that will connect Fort Williams Park with the town center via Dyer Pond Road. It's my understanding that there already is a paper road that goes from the end of Dyer Pond Road over to Mitchell Road. And there's already a bike path that comes up Route 77 to Mitchell Road and beyond Mitchell Road. Um, the idea of connecting up with that bike path from the Dyer Pond the end of Dyer Pond Road would, to my mind, be a much safer way to provide for the bicycle and walking transportation. It would require either doing something to Mitchell Road or I think there are a, a pattern of easements that would take you back behind along in the woods behind Mitchell Road, um, but I think that would be a much more direct and safe way to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Hess. Good evening. My name is Frances Haywood. I live at 1221 Shore Road. Um, I, will, I am just here to nod my head vigorously uh, in agreement with the previous two speakers about the two issues of uh, increasing the width of Shore Road, which would increase the speed of traffic and invite more and younger bikers on. I think that would uh, definitely increase the danger of the shore road. And secondly, um, with regard to the committee process that was set up, uh, the people on the P2 committee spent literally hundreds of man hours studying this uh, situation. And their recommendation was that this, these federal funds not be accepted. And I urge you to uh, gr agree with them and vote not to accept these federal funds. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hayward. I'm Sophie Caracas from 72 Stony Brook Road in Cape Elizabeth. I lived in the Cape for 30 years, and I traveled that road daily to, to go to work at Pond Coast School for 22 years. Tonight, when I left my home and got to Shore Road, I purposely looked at the width of Shore Road leading all the way to Fort Williams entrance. And then I tried to imagine that on Shore Road leading from Fort Williams all the way to, to our town center. <coughs> our Shore Road, not only for its beauty, but it is so windy. I want to say ditto to everything that these other people have said, that to widen it, to have it be like the rest of Shore Road, would be detrimental. It would be hazardous. When the gentleman said about lowering the uh, speed to 30 miles an hour. I recall when the town had put up to 40 miles and had it turned down to 35 to lower it. Even today, people try to go faster. And to make bike paths would make it like a, speed, like a, like a roller coaster speedway, because that's how they would use it. It would make so much more sense to use option A rather than to widen that road because like they said, we have very, very few accidents on that road. And the reason for that is because it is windy and people have to be careful. If we make it easier for them, they're going to take advantage of it. Then we'd really have problems. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Caracas. If there is anybody else who would like to speak to these items, I would ask that you get up behind Mr. Potenzo at the lectern, please, so we'll have a feel for the timing. Thank you. Yes, I'm sir. Frank Potenzo, 8 Ivy Road. I've lived in Cape for 38 years. I've spoken before the council before. I've written articles to the Courier. And I'd like to ask a question of the council. There seems to be some misunderstanding about the mandatory uh, requirements of MDOT for federal funds. Uh, Mr. Bayros, every time I've heard him speak, says that uh, in order to get the federal funds, it's mandated that it be a four foot wide uh, stretch on each side, Shore Road. And I've heard people here talking about one foot, two feet, three feet. In order to get the federal funds, if it's if Shore Road's got to be wide and four feet on each side, that seems utterly ridiculous. The road is not wide enough to begin with now. One of the provisions in the original uh, request that started, I don't know, two years ago, was that no taking of private property. I'm against widening Shore Road. That's item 58. And I don't think that the uh, federal funds should be used. That's our tax money, your money, my money. I think item 61 is completely ridiculous to construct a sidewalk on Shore Road from Fort Williams Park to Dyer Pond Road. At the end of that sidewalk, people are going to have to cross Shore Road to get to Dyer Pond Road. Dyer Pond Road going out towards the center of the town is on the right hand side. Am I correct? Yes, sir. The sidewalk's on the left hand side of the road. Now, you mean to tell me that if the sidewalk is built on Shore Road from Fort Williams to Dyer Pond Road, the next step, probably next year, is, is a request to put a traffic light there so that people can cross. Shore Road to get to Dyer Pond Road. And, and a sidewalk from Fort Williams to Dyer Pond Road, isn't that going to be like a green light for young kids on bicycles to bike up that path, up that sidewalk on Shore Road? Doesn't make sense to me to build a sidewalk on one side of the road to cross a highway that everyone says is, is dangerous to begin with because of all the curves in it. I would say leave Shore Road the way it is. Forget about the federal funded money that's our tax money anyway. And not to build a sidewalk on Shore Road to die upon road where people are going to have to cross Shore Road to get to that opening. And if there are any families in Cape that have kids that are, that are five, six, seven, eight years old, and they want them to go out on Shore Road and bike because they, that's the only way they're going to get to the town center or to Family Field or Lions Field, I would say to put your kids in your car, put the bike in the trunk and take them over somewhere drop them off and say, now you bike here and I'll be back in an hour to pick you up, <clears throat> but don't let them go alone. And I don't think that the, for two years now, the minority of people have been pushing this thing, and I would think it's up to the council and your wisdom to make a decision and not have any more public hearings on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Potenza. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to these items? Mm -hmm. 
Anybody else wishes to speak at the microphone on these items? Thank you. First item on the council agenda this evening under regular business is item number 58, vote upon acceptance of state and federal funds for the Shore Road bike path. One comment from the public that I would like to clarify was about what is the mandatory requirement um, on the width of the bikeways, proposed bikeways, if we are going to accept the funding um, through the state for the federal funding. My understanding is that that requirement is four feet wide. Less than curb. If it's curb, curbed. Uncurbed. Four feet wide without a curb, C-U-R-B. Five feet wide with a curb. From the experience um, that Falmouth is having, that we heard a little bit further explanation about this evening, it sounded like there were instances um, both Falmouth and Scarborough had instances where that width was reduced. That I have to accurate. confess, I have not read the morning paper. So <laughs> it's been a busy day for a lot of people. Yes. Okay. Just to clarify that question. If, so when you hear people talking about a two-foot wide shoulder improvement, would not be called a bikeway, it would be called a shoulder improvement, that is talking only about local funding. That is not talking about any kind of state or federal funding at this point if we are talking about a two-foot wide shoulder improvement on Shore Road, Two Lights Road, or any other road in the community. Okay. Thank you. Mr. McGovern, do you have anything you want to add this evening? For those of you in the audience and perhaps at home who may be wondering when some people were referring to option A or option B, what the council has received um, in their packets from the manager is a compendium of draft motions for our evening um, perusal and discussion. These are things that, this is language that the council is always able to make adjustments to, to edit, to totally ignore if they so desire. It's basically helpful to have a jumping off point. The council is not here to rubber stamp what is presented to it by the manager. Um, a lot of things get done in workshops, a lot of which are, which are public meetings. A lot of our work also gets done here at the council meeting. So what, when you heard people referring to option A or option B, they are referring to what has been put forth as a draft by the manager. For those of you in the audience, I know there are a number of these available on the back table. If, there, if we have run out of those, I would encourage you to please share with somebody who did pick one up earlier in the evening. But I know they were available at the beginning of the meeting. At this point, I would like to hear from the council on I don't know if you want to have discussion or a motion first. Council Linnell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, <coughs> just to get the ball rolling, I thought I'd start with a motion, and then we can certainly okay. flesh out some of the issues. OK. Um, uh, essentially, uh, I'd like to start with option B. Um, um, to our, shall I, I should probably read it for the benefit of everyone here. Yes, please. And I have a couple of. Uh, things I'll add uh, based on what I've heard recently. Uh, order to authorize the town manager to notify the main Department of Transportation of the town's desire to move forward with a design of a bikeway pedestrian shoulder on Shore Road from Fort Williams Park to Route 77 subject to the following guidelines. One, uh, the shoulders may not exceed four feet in width on either side except uh, at curb areas. And I've added that to the at curb areas. Uh, to the language that you see before you. Number two, the shoulders may be narrower, narrower at Pond Cove to avoid wetland filling. Number three, stone walls in the right of way shall be relocated as a project expense if in the way of the project. Four, design is to be completed by a firm hired by the town of Cape Elizabeth. Five, a local design review committee consisting of seven citizens with the town manager and the director of public works serving as ex officio members shall be appointed by the town council to work with a consultant. Six, 
A final design shall be approved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Seven, this project shall be coordinated with a local project to improve drainage near Tides Edge Road and Lawson Road. And I added Lawson Road, uh, hearing some comments tonight. Eight, there shall be no taking of land for the project. Nine, proper drainage patterns and snow storage areas shall be maintained. Thank you, Councilman Mill. Do we have a second on that? I'll second with a comment. Yes. Um, I have a concern with the language, proper drainage patterns and snow storage areas shall be maintained. We do not have proper drainage patterns and snow storage areas that are appropriate in certain parts of Shore Road. So I'd like to have, instead of maintain, shall be constructed or retained, as opposed to main maintain suggests to me they already exist. We know for a fact they do not already exist. And the other... Um, question I had is regarding item number two. The shoulders may be narrower at Pond Cove to avoid wetland filling and at other areas determined to be uh, unsuitable for four foot or five foot. Specific, the trade out by Julian Road and other areas that we've talked about in meetings. Is that an amendment, or do you want to discuss with the I'd originator of the motion? I'd, I'd accept the amendment. I'm fine with it. We could amend it. Okay. Thank you. The amendment's plural. <laughs> All right. We do have a motion, and we have a second. Council discussion? I have a question, first of all, on uh, number, sorry, number one. Mm -hmm. um, is, was that accept a curbed C-U-R-B? E-D area? Curb area, C-U-R-B. Okay. E-D. E-D. Curb. Curb or curbed? Well, we don't, the, uh, curbed is past tense. I'm not sure we have any curbed areas. But if we do, uh, I think it's what would be created is what we're talking right. about here. The designer jargon is curbed, I believe. Is that... I see a couple engineers in the audience. They want them to nod their heads up or down. <laughs> Curb or curbed? Either one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ms. McGinty, anything else? Not right now. Okay. Councilor Groff? I have a couple questions that perhaps uh, other councilors can help me out. I, my understanding is, and I want to be, I want to make sure I'm absolutely correct, that when this federal grant was authorized, it was done approximately two and a half years ago or more now. And at that time, the, the fund was, the grant is they would pay 80% and the town pays 20%. But that's not the amount of what it would cost today. That 80% is capped at the maximum that they would authorize two and a half years ago. Is that correct or incorrect? Mr. McGovern? That's correct. What is, at this point in time, because I don't want to vote for anything either way that I don't understand the cost, what is our best estimate at this point in time what the, uh, how much money the state or federal government would pay and how much money the town would be required to pay uh, if we voted for option B. The, the original grant amount was based on a project of $415,000. The state did an estimate in 1995, at the very beginning of 1995, which was $425,000. Uh, with the town assuming 20 percent of the grant, we, we would be responsible for 82000 of the grant plus 100 percent of any amount over the grant amount or the full 10,000 of the 95 state estimate for a total of $92,000. Obviously, you know, this is based on a state estimate of 1995 and, you know, depending on other conditions the town uh, might request during the process, uh, the total grant project, uh, total project in cost could go up or down. Is it correct that the 82, this $425,000 if there was any stone walls that had to be removed and rebuilt, 
that that cost would be, uh, in addition to the $425,000, and have to be borne exclusively by the town. Is that correct or incorrect? No, the state came and did a site visit in very early 1995, looked at all of the stone walls, looked at the trees, looked at the drainage patterns, and it was based on their impressions of everything that they saw that was possibly within the way uh, of extending the bike, uh, the, the shoulders of the road by four feet on either side. By four feet? And five feet in the curbed section. There's sections that would need to be curbed, and some sections would need to be curbed if there was a big uh, drop off just beyond. If we, with option B, with these other additions to option and option B, uh, conditions one through nine, how many of those conditions were included in the cost estimates, if any, by the state when they came up with the $425,000 figure? The state had before it, when uh, Councilor Cogswell and I had met with them, all of these conditions. The only one they really took exception to uh, was number one, uh, which, which indicated, and that was simply in terms of the curbed sections needing to be five feet. Aside from that, they're aware of all of these, and that did build into their cost estimate. <coughs> That's all for right now. I have more. Okay. Thank you. Council Council. Um, since the motion has been proposed that would um, include loss in road drainage in this project, can you tell us approximately how much, how many thousands of dollars this would be adding to the project? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the citizen meant by loss in road, nor what the motion or nor what the seconder meant. Uh, the, there's two options for taking care of the drainage at the tides of the road. What we're talking about is there's a big hill there that comes down onto Shore Road, and oftentimes there's a large puddle along Shore Road, and we, we put cones around it. But there's also a problem over on Tides Edge Road that all of the water goes down and floods those properties as well as some at the very end of, of Lawson. The options are to either take a pipe and obtain easements to go down through the Tides Edge corridor or to go down Shore Road to the Pond Cove area. It's always appeared that the, the more likely alternative is to do the, the one going down Shore Road. I don't know if, you know, what was meant by Lawson Road was simply to bring the drainage past there or to solve some other problem on Lawson Road. So, uh, you know, I would look to the motioner to see what the motioner meant. Council Nell. Yeah, I think the, the time, if, if you're doing some construction work at Shore Road, I think that would be the time to run the drainage down by there, and that's, that's my intention. Council Coxell. Yes, I just want to complete um, my question. If that's your intention, that really should be something other than this project, which has specific grant tied to it. And I do have a copy of the November 1994 um, enhancement proposals and the approval would grant only $332,000 to Cape Elizabeth for this project. <coughs> and if we're saying, so no matter how much it costs, that's all we're going to be getting from this particular project. Is that correct? It came out yeah. 93, yeah. But. That is correct, except I think as everyone is aware, you know, depending on what projects go forward and what projects don't, if there was any project that, wanted to go, that you wanted to go forward and one didn't, and you wanted us to approach the state to try to make good with money left on the other, you know, there's that potential for a motion down the road. Councilor Reid. Uh, Madam Chairman, I would like the town manager to discuss briefly item number 70, which is a Tides Edge drainage project, in which we will be asked to vote tonight to um, allocate up to $10,000 for the engineering design of the Shore Road, Tides Edge Road intersection uh, specific to drainage. And I would just like um, to know what the linear miles would be of that project and an estimate of the cost, please. I don't recall the exact number of, of feet. We did have a, an engineer's estimate done a couple of years ago that indicated 
the option going down Shore Road was in the vicinity of $150,000. That's my recollection. And what I wanted to point out to the people so that they understand the scope of our receiving some of our tax dollars back in the form of federal money, um, the engineering study to do the 2.3 miles is approximately $80,000, and to do the approximately two tenths of a mile around uh, Tides Edge Road is uh, approximately 10,000 uh, based on the information we have for the motion. Furthermore, the town share to do this uh, shore road by these estimates is less than 100,000, yet to do the drainage on this much smaller portion of the intersection of Shore Road is 150000 So if people will understand the scope of what we can get for $80,000 versus what we will be getting for 160000 of additional tax money, I just feel it's important to point that out at this time. Thank you, Councillor Reed. Councillor Jordan? No, I just wanted to add that uh, I was, uh, <coughs> I can see it. The money for the design and what have you is coming out of that 400 and some thousand. Is that correct? The, the, the money for the design would come out of the grant if ultimately the council, after it received the design, voted to go ahead with the project. If the town had the design done and then voted not to go ahead with the project, the town would have to fund 100 percent of the design cost. So if you got 400 and some odd thousand, then it's going to take 80,000 to do the design. I don't believe there's money enough left. I'm no engineer and I'm just a dead farmer, but less things are done cheaper on roads than they are on other things. I don't think there's money enough there to do the project. And I just feel that we're getting dragged into something that we're going to have to add money to later on. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Reid. Madam Chairman, I have a question regarding the engineering studies and not to put the town manager on the uh, spot, but um, is it likely that before the entire $80,000, which will cover the soup to nuts start to finish of this project, that before we expend $80,000 on preliminary review, we would probably know whether or not uh, we would want to continue with the scope of the project? I wouldn't want to predict what action the council might take at any point. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Um, my guess would be that we would not have to spend the money for completion of a project if we decided early on not to continue with it. But that's just my observation. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, the other question um, I had is that the Tides Edge Road that we're being asked to talk about uh, later tonight, um, does that impact at all um, by coupling it with the Shore Road? The, the reason it was coupled, it, it just didn't make any sense if you were going to do any shoulder bikeway improvements on Shore Road and we're going to be putting in a drainage line along two-tenths of the same area, two-tenths of a mile, to go in one year and do one and to go in the next year and do the other. It just made sense to go try to go in and do them at the same time. So that, that's why uh, the work was coupled to, to make sure that we didn't go in there twice in two years. If I could follow up on that one and just ask when, if that were within the same time frame, have we projected a time frame for loss and road improvements for the drainage on, at the end of Lawson? I, I still don't know what we're talking about on Lawson Road. It's, you know, there's, there's a project being created as, as the meeting goes on, and I haven't seen the description of it yet. Council Linnell? Well, I just, uh, I'd like to just back up a little bit. I know we've heard some discussion tonight from the public, and we, we have an option before us talking about a two-foot sort of uh, what may, be, may appear to be the happy medium. Uh, while I'm not uh, necessarily in favor of the two-foot option, uh, I would like to point out that if we did the two-foot option, we would be eligible for no federal money, and I'd like to come back to the minute, that in a minute, but we would have to do the design work. And uh, if we, uh, we, can, we could go ahead 
with the mo the motion as as we have it, and uh, we do the design work for four foot. If for some reason, when 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 it came time for the council to make the to finally approve the design, if we decided that uh, we would rather have a two foot uh, uh, road, the design work would be essentially done. So if we're looking at uh, either the four foot or the two foot option, uh, the design work would be uh, done uh, at the same time. And just briefly, I'd like to clear something up, at least in terms of my opinion of federal money. There's been some debate as to whose money is it, and, I, and my, my sense is this. It certainly is our money. Uh, this has been going on for a couple of years. Our money went to Washington. This is an opportunity to bring it back. So it, it is our money, and, and I think we have every right to spend it. Uh, we certainly, if the federal government were looking at uh, uh, increasing school funding for Cape Elizabeth, I don't think there's too many people in this room that would turn it down. So I think we, we certainly have an issue of how we want to spend the money. Uh, but it is, I believe it is our money, and we have the right to do with it as we see fit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Groff. I have been, uh, I have received comments from numerous councillors at different times and some of our state representatives, and I've always gotten the, the same response to the question of would MDOT actually allow less than four foot at any place other than at Pond Cove. And the answer I have gotten consistently is that they will be flexible. Uh, I read with interest the, in the, the paper today uh, on Route 88, and that's a five foot bikeway, and it wasn't flexible on the width, it was flexible on the location of the bikeway. Uh, before I vote, I want to make sure that I have a clear understanding from anyone who has a clear understanding if there's any possibility that the state would allow at some place other than Pond Cove a bikeway that was less than four foot in any other section of Shore Road. And if somebody can tell me that with some certainty, that would help me measurably. Mr. McGovern? Yeah. On this topic, I spoke to Al Bells, who's in the planning division, Margaret Vanderbrook, uh, who is the bicycle uh, pedestrian coordinator, uh, most recently with Margaret Vanderbrook just two weeks ago. And she indicated that MDOT would not recommend to the federal government any funding of bikeway using state and federal funds. Uh, that didn't meet the standards of the four feet and then the five feet curb sections. I again asked the question, well, what about narrowing it down in certain really difficult areas? And she responded, generally, you know, she, no in terms of, you know, she didn't want to open the door to that, but if there was a particularly unique area, yes, they'd want to look at it, but they didn't want to look at particular unique areas uh, every uh, tenth of a mile, or every third of a mile. Councillor Reid. Then how come Scarborough, Gorham, and Falmouth can get concessions on the width? And further, we are assuming laying out four feet of paved shoulder on where the existing road is and the existing center line is. And within the P2 committee, we understood that that may not necessarily be the case, that the right-of-way on one side of the road or the other, or because of curves, horizontal or vertical, a change in the alignment of the road would be more appropriate to the safety of the road. So I'm just wondering why we're so unique. Yeah, I don't know what the situation is in, in Falmouth, and I haven't read the newspaper, but what's going on in Scarborough is that their grant, my understanding is, was not for what is known as, as an enhancement project. We received the funds under an enhancement project. There's different categories of funding within the within ice t the Intermodal <coughs> Surface Transportation Efficiency Act. Uh, because we're not doing a major reconstruction of Shore Road, we, would, we just went in for bike paths, we fell under the enhancement category. 
What Scarborough is doing is a much larger project that, that doesn't just involve bike paths. They're reconstructing roads, building bridges, and that type thing. And, you know, my guess is what, they, what they're doing is, you know, not building bike paths at all. They're just debating the width of shoulders on a road, but not falling into the fact that they, that they are quote, unquote, bike paths. Council and now. Yes, Madam Chairman, thank you. Um, I'd just like to follow up on that same uh, subject. Um, I think uh, one of the beauties and the compromises in, in, that, uh, this, in this motion that we have before us is that it provides for a local design review committee consisting of seven citizens. And that committee can make recommendations as to if it would uh, uh, spare a little more room near a tree or you know, a special tree like Julianne Lane, I believe, uh, the center line could be moved, could be changed. So within the town right of way, if there's more room on one side than the other, it could be moved. This, town, this local citizen group uh, could make that recommendation uh, and we could, uh, I think there's a lot of room for compromise there. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cogsell. Yes, I have before me um, some of the minutes I took with a meeting with the different people from MDOT. And they were really specific because this was ice tea money that unless it was an extremely extenuating circumstance, which the driveway, the drive through um, analysis showed that the Pond Cove area was in specific area. If you have a four-foot bike path on either side of your highway and it zeroes down to nothing, that is more of a safety hazard than if you have a consistently narrow road. We also have um, material that came from um, Chief Pickering. He has a lot of graphs. They have a lot of data and stati statistics um, about the average speeding on the road whenever they've been testing over the years. Uh, most of them do not um, even hit 40 miles an hour. He did some just recently to uh, corroborate the um, fact that most people do not speed excessively. They also have um, some strong recommendations. He did, we also have a letter here from um, the Department of Transportation from Lee Chase, which said that at this point they would not, the state is the one who regulates speed limits, that they would not reduce the speed of, of this area to 30 miles an hour that because of the density of, the po of development and population, that 35 is more than adequate. They also had uh, a suggestion that perhaps increased enforcement. Now, this comes from the police chief himself, who says that they should increase the enforcement of the present speed limit more um, often than they do. That also, we should have better signage. And those of you who drive any roads in any areas will notice you'll see a sign that says sharp curve, blind drive, that we should have advisory um, signs and more regulatory speed limit signs on this road and he felt that this would be quite sufficient in dealing with any perceived safety problems we have. Lee Chase said that establishing and placing these signs is completely in the purview of the town and he also suggested that perhaps the um, existing shoulders of Shore Road should be tapered up to a level of the paved travel surface with some type of aggregate. There are a lot of statistics from different highway engineers that say the wider the road, psychologically, the faster people travel. Um, and I, I can't support putting money up front of town money to um, even further study this area, which has been surveyed a couple of different times, first by E.C. Jordan, and we actually have um, plans that show where in the right of way the road lies exactly where all the different little trees and rocks and stone walls are. We also had a follow-up on that Hoffman DeLuca. And so I, I just, I can't vote for this particular project. I think some of the safety issues are, could be dealt with in a, a less expensive um, manner. 
and that our money could be better spent on other projects that we have before us. Thank you. Councilor McGinty? Um, I'm also not convinced that putting bike paths on this road will make it safer. I think that it will increase um, vehicle speed. Um, I think it will invite people who should not be there to be out there bicycling, um, make it a further safety hazard. I, I think of Sawyer Road out by uh, Fickett, out there by Elizabeth Farms, where they widened the road a number of years ago. And, you know, it's a virtual speed trap out there for anybody who goes out there. Speed limit's 30 miles an hour, but cars go roaring through there because it's such a nice wide road with a uh, nice bicycle pass on it, but you seldom see bicyclists out there. Um, by the way, I'm also a jogger and a bicyclist, and um, you know, I have safety concerns myself. Um, but I don't think that the widening shore road is going to enhance the, uh, the safety. Also, I'm um, concerned about the money issue. I'm not so sure that, uh, well, we all know this, the cost of this project is not going down. It's going to go continue to go up. Um, who knows how, how much. I agree with uh, uh, Councillor Cogshall that um, I think we studied this probably pretty much to the end. We, we need not put any more uh, local taxpayer money into it. Um, and, uh, and also I, I have a concern, of, a third concern about the rural character of the road. Um, we're slowly chipping away at the, the rural nature of the town. Um, when uh, Dominica's Crossing goes in, um, that area up around uh, the Jordan and Layton farm area up there, um, you know, it's going to turn into just another big neighborhood. And so um, I can't support this, uh, this motion either. Council Linnell. Um, you know, I got to have a little more confidence in our police department. If cars are going too fast on Shore Road, I don't think we need to narrow or widen the road to, to correct that. I, uh, it seems to me that uh, if we need to slow down the speed limit, we need to write a few more tickets or, uh, or something. Uh, I think that uh, one issue that I haven't seen, uh, except that I, I, had to, I, I dug it out myself, uh, and I, I think it's the, probably the single most objective evaluation of the safety on Shore Road. And we've, we've heard a lot about it's going to make it more safe, it's going to make it less safe. But, uh, and, and I agree with, I think every, well, probably everyone in this room, uh, uh, that the, uh, the quaint and, and rural character of that road is, I mean, it's sweet. It is. And, and I've been, this, I'm a fifth generation resident. Uh, I, I've, uh, I remember when, ha you know, well, probably not half the houses in this town weren't even here. And I love Shore Road. That's how we got to grandmother's house, okay? Um, but I'm also concerned that uh, uh, the most, I think the most objective evaluation or criteria uh, in looking at safety on Shore Road is what the DOT calls the critical rate factor. And they have a formula which they use to evaluate uh, a, a stretch of road. And they've got it on computer and, and they can tell you uh, give you a, a safety factor for any stretch of road in the state of Maine, as I understand it. Uh, and you can tell them from one road to another or move it down from the next road to another road and so forth. And they put a lot of information together, which includes uh, traffic tickets, accidents, frequency, and so on and so on. And they have some formula. And when the critical rate factor gets to 1.0 or higher, they say, we've got to do something. And uh, I, I asked, uh, 15 months ago, I asked uh, some, uh, somebody at PACS, uh, Transportation Planning, you know, what's the story on safety in Cape Elizabeth? And I've got, and I'll, and I'll get one of these for the public or we can warm up the photocopier and, and show you. Um, I have a printout, and my understanding is there's, there's only one road in the town of Cape Elizabeth that is at or over the 1.0 critical rate factor. And that's Shore Road, um, or a section of Shore Road. And we all know where it is, down around Singles Road and so forth, where it's windy. And I submit to you that that is uh, one of the sweetest, narrow, winding roads you'll ever see. Unfortunately, I think it's a pretty safe bet 
that those narrow curves with those, uh, the picturesque rock outcroppings uh, contribute to the short di uh, site distances, which uh, makes that road relatively unsafe. And so I think we need to do something about uh, those outcroppings and so forth. And uh, I think by the time you straighten those out, uh, you might as well accommodate the people that live in those neighborhoods so that they can get, so their kids can get from one neighborhood to the other without getting run over. I asked a, a, a truck driver in town, I was real curious because I had no idea what his, uh, what his answer would be. I was just kind of curious what he, how he would feel about this. I thought he, actually I thought he'd take kind of the sand and gravel approach. And I asked him about Shore Road and his comment, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, uh, edit some of it, but he said someone's going to get killed on that road. And, and I'll tell you from personal experience, when I launched my boat and took it on the trailer down, to, down Shore Road to South Portland, and I had people on either side of the road, uh, I wished I had gone a, a different route, quite frankly. It, it, was not a, it was a very uncomfortable feeling given the size of that road. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor O'Neill. Councilor Jordan. No, I just want to say that I'm not a supporter of this project as the way it has been laid out, and I think a lot of them, other councillors have pointed out some same points that I have, and I still just have a gut feeling that it's a project that you're going to get uh, tied into, and the funds to do it completely isn't there with this grant, and uh, they can... Prove to me that they can do it for the 400 and some thousand. I would think it would be different, but as of now, I'm not going to vote in favor of this project. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Reid? Um, I have two comments. One, um, in light of the manager's comments regarding the addition of the language to Lawson Road, I'd like to uh, get the Lawson Road language out of that motion. I mean, if this is going to fail, it should fail on the merits of not doing it as opposed to something uh, we threw in there uh, without considerable discussion. So I'd like to remove the Lawson Road uh, reference to uh, item number seven and leave it uh, at Tides Edge Road. And in number two, in light of uh, Councillor Coggeshall's reading of the MDOT language, I would like number two to say the shoulders may be narrower at Pond Cove to avoid wetland filling or other areas determined to be particularly unique. Do you agree with that? Yes, I, I would agree to uh, amend the motions uh, as Council Reed has suggested. I apologize to Mr. Littlefield. Uh, we'll revisit Lawson Road. Uh, we won't forget you. I, I just wanted to check with the town clerk that that was an appropriate way to deal with that situation, and she assures me that it is. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reed. Uh, in uh, the councillor's uh, packet of materials, which have been uh, quite numerous uh, recently, I would like to point out that there is a piece by the Pro Bike, Pro Walk uh, 96 item, which draws conclusions regarding a study that was done regarding the analysis of the separation distances between bicyclists and motorists and if you can bear with me for a couple of points since safety seems to be a key uh, issue on either side of this um, decision. Uh, they state that motorists are much less likely to encroach upon the adjacent lane uh, when, a pass when passing a bicyclist on facilities with paved shoulders or bike lanes. Also that motorists have less variation in their lane placement when passing a bicyclist where there is a paved <coughs> shoulder or bicycle facility and that there is an increased distance from the roadway edge only marginally uh, reducing the separation of distance between bicyclists and motorists but significantly increases the distance to the right of the bicyclists which can be used if uh, they need to maneuver. Uh, to get around an object, debris in the lane, or to move further from passing traffic, for example, a large truck or, I will add, tour bus. So uh, also that they recommend that a bike lane should be no narrower than three feet 
and that the most appropriate is four feet, four and a half, and five feet, which is probably why the uh, MDOT and ice t requirements are four feet to five feet. And everyone got this in the mail, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll make no further comments. I'm voting yes, obviously. Thank you. Councilman McGinty. I'd just like to make a comment regarding uh, accident causation factors on Shore Road in light of uh, the information Councilman Linnell provided. Um, in a report dated August 4th, 1996, from the Chief of Police, um, he has a chart uh, indicating the causation factors on Shore Road from 192 to the present. And the biggest factor of accidents on Shore Road is deer. It's D E E R, deer. Um, and speed is uh, down at 11 percent. It's not the second, it's about the fourth, fifth highest causation. Thank you, Councilor McGinty. I brought it up. I just want to make a few comments from my position. I do very much appreciate the information we received from the police chief. Um, Councillor Cogsall has summarized this. I'm very much supportive, regardless of how our vote ends up tonight, of the increased enforcement on Shore Road. I am very aware of my driving habits on Shore Road. They have been altered <laughs> since we've just begun these discussions. Um, relative to the signs on show, there was one, at least one road in this community where there's more of a homemade type sign about slow down, our children are playing here, and I think it has different colored handprints on it. The police chief and I talked about having that kind of sign rather than the standard um, yellow sign with black on it. I think sometimes those catch your attention more. I have found that people from outside this area, who certainly do come and use Shore Road, are not aware of the different kinds of users that we have on Shore Road, that we have joggers, that we have walkers, that we have people on bicycles. And I think having that kind of sign would be appropriate. The police chief is pointing out that we have signs, I'm still reading it that way, <laughs> dangerous curve, blind drive, deer crossing, speed enforced by radar. I'll tell you, I keep reading this and I get it to blind deer. And I think that's why we had all those deer accidents on Shore Road, I don't know. Um, Leaving it that way, I have been fortunate in being able to do some traveling in the past couple of months um, outside this community, outside the state actually, and particularly a couple of weekends ago, I was in southern Pennsylvania. I saw roads with two to three foot shoulders on them in a town where there were a lot of tourists. This was in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and a good number of those roads, which are not very wide, did have the wider shoulders, and very often they happened to be a different color than the pavement traveled by vehicles. It changes the perception of the width. And this is something I know I've talked with design professionals, had heard about this and how it changes your perception. I was very glad I had an opportunity to experience that. You, I, anyway, did not perceive the width for my vehicle travel to be wider because there was a wider shoulder, especially when it was a different color. That is something that, if this is approved, I hope would be taken into consideration. You can look at that kind of design feature, and I think it's about time for the state and for the federal government to start taking some of that into consideration. We have to accommodate existing situations in so many communities that are applying for and receiving the ICE-T grants. I have been involved in discussions uh, about the Shore Road shoulders and the situation with traveling by any mode on Shore Road since I've been on this council. There are reports going back over 10 years about what recommendations there are for Shore Road. It's a road I happen to live in close proximity to. I travel it on a very regular basis in my car and by foot. Other members of my family travel it by those modes as well as by bicycle. And from the discussions I've heard and the material that has been presented, I am going to be supporting the shoulder improvements on Shore Road. We have any other council? Council Linnell? 
Yeah, I just want to make a clarification. Somewhere we we heard comment, and somebody uh, was under the impression that like this is going to take 20 feet, 28 feet off the road. Uh, and you know, if I thought it, if I honestly thought it was 28 feet, I don't, I'm not sure I'd support it. I, I think that's a, that's a bit much. Uh, what we're talking about is four feet on each side, four feet, and there's a shoulder there, but the shoulder, the existing shoulder, would just be pushed out four feet from where it is now. And certainly there'd be some grading, some grading issues, but I, I, I just don't believe, I just, uh, I, I don't think that, uh, that this is going to take 28 feet. I think it's going to be eight feet, four feet on each side. Uh, if there's a curb area, uh, at some point, uh, there'd be an extra foot on each side. Um, I, I recognize that the aesthetics will be affected. Uh, I'd like to see a citizen committee uh, work to minimize uh, those effects. And I, I, I think the, the benefits uh, outweigh uh, the, uh, the drawbacks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I just like to add. I, for me, one of the very important conditions on this is number six, that says a final design shall be approved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. We did something similar, or in the process of doing something similar, with design for playing fields. You, we had to spend some money to get the answers that got us to where we are with that situation. If we end up spending money to get the answers that we need. I'm in favor of doing that. I'd like to have a fully informed vote, and I think if this can come back to the council for a final design at that time, I will feel that I can be making that kind of vote. Councilor Cogsell? Yes. Um, in our meeting with the MDOT people January of 95, I specifically asked about um, what kind of a slope would be needed in certain areas if you have a four-foot wide bike path. They um, reply that you would need a three to one slope with fill to support this extra width. And in some areas, um, in order to get that three to one foot fill, it could be a minimum of nine feet for that one side that would need to be cleared and filled. And if there were any trees, there would need to be at least a two foot clearance within that nine feet for all trees. And if any trees fell within that nine feet, they would also need to be cut. So it's not just four feet with a little gravel on the side. In some areas, it could be a fairly extensive swath that is cut. The town council had a workshop on the 18th of August, was it? 20, what was the last minute? 28th of August, where we workshopped this issue. And it, it seemed at that time to be a consensus that um, we felt that improving travel surface by two feet on either side of the road would be sufficient to address a lot of safety concerns. Shore Road was not eliminated from that possibility. And so I guess I ask you, Janet, what you mean by supporting shoulder enhancement? I'm supporting the application for the state and federal funds okay. with those well, requirements. I'd like you to say that. And with that, I move the question. Oh, excuse me. I'll withdraw. Councilor Groff. I'm finding this very difficult because um, when I left home tonight, my 10-year-old, her parting words were, Daddy, I want a bicycle. I want to be able to take my bicycle on Shore Road. And not voting for this breaks my heart because in this town, we have had so many bogus issues about, in my view, about the Shore Road project. <laughs> in all candor, I don't care about somebody's lilac bushes. I care more about my child being able to take her bike and go to Fort Williams or go down to Pond Cove. And I care more about the citizens of this town being able to get out and be a part of this town rather than just be in their cars. I'm tired of this town being construed as the old against the young because I don't think that's fair and I don't think it's true if we all stop and think about things. The reason I can't vote for this proposal 
is that I do not believe that our nine conditions will ever be met. And what will happen is that we will spend $80,000 and that we will end up not getting anything for it as a town. And I want that money spent other ways. I'm not voting against Shore Road because I was swayed by the emotional appeals of save this stone wall or save that. I'm voting against Shore Road on this proposal as it's drafted because I don't think as this is drafted there will be an end to this and we will be in the same position a year from now because these conditions that we're now voting on can't be met. And it breaks my heart. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilor Jordan? Yeah, I would just like to say I think we ought to vote because as I look at the clock, we might be out of here by two, one or two in the morning. I'll take that as moving the question. I've asked the clerk for a roll call vote on this, please. Chairman McLaughlin? That was last. I'm sorry. Councilor Cogsall? No. Councilor Groff? No. Councilor Jordan? No. Councilor Linnell? Yes. Councilor McGinty? No. Councilor Reed? Yes. Chairman McLaughlin? Yes. Motion fails, three yeas, four nays. Thank you. Chairman? Just, let's just. We take five. Let's, I want to wait a moment for the noise to settle down. <laughs> council Cogsell. I would, I would like to see the council follow up on the chief of police's recommendations, particularly for four ro uh, Shore Road, but also for some other roads in that they um, more strictly enforce the speed limit. Now, is it appropriate for me to make a motion to that effect? Or should we go on to option A, where we have to direct the town manager? How can we do that? You are able to put that into a motion with that um, be a town council policy. Councilor Gruff? If I could, before later. that is a motion, and because it's late tonight, I, my concerns about safety on Shore Road have not been satisfied at all because of my vote uh, to not put the bicycle path down. And I would like a motion of the council, I would like to make a motion mm -hmm. that by the next meeting, the town manager be directed to prepare for town council consideration a after consultation with the chief of police a proposal that will comprehensively attempt to take another look at shore road and have that proposal here for us to, to discuss and i assume that proposal will encompass uh, increased enforcement I assume that proposal will encompass the idea of what would be practical to be able to do to Shore Road to address some of our absolute problem areas. And Shore Road is not, in my view, going to be swept under the rug because if I understand uh, council procedure, unless we can come to some agreement tonight that we are also going to direct the town manager in a serious way uh, to look at safety issues on Shore Road. My understanding is, since I voted no on this request, that I have a right to re-bring up uh, the acceptance of this grant tonight. And unless we have a discussion now about uh, being serious about making Shore Road safer, I very well could exercise that option. Was that a motion? 
That was the request for discussion, and I certainly would like to hear, other, before I make a formal motion, I would like to hear other people's reaction to that concept. Thank you. Council Um Yeah, I, I'd like to see, I'm not uh, sure that, uh, I think the, the manager's going on vacation pretty soon. I'm not sure he's going to have a chance to, to do that, and I just uh, would like to hear from, from him before we pile on too much work. Um, and the other thing is, if we're going to get serious about this, I'd like to see uh, the police chief, who I have a lot of respect for, I'd like to see him address this critical rate factor in any report he does, because it is not even mentioned in his report we have tonight from him. And I'm concerned uh, that this issue has been kicked around for two years that I've been around, and probably eight or ten years before that. And uh, when I raised the critical rate factor, nobody wanted to talk about it. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Reed. Um, I'd like to also request the accident statistics for 1995 and year to date 1996, since that report ends with 1995 and, my, and 1994 with my packet. Um, also, I was wondering if Councillor Groff understands that as of uh, September 30th, this grant money is gone, and the October 14th meeting will be too late. I understand that, but okay. I also understand that tonight is the time to convey that this council is going to be serious about addressing uh, legitimate safety issues on Shore Road. And if there's a consensus of this council that that's what, that, that is a project and a priority that we are going to undertake, uh, that would satisfy me tonight. But uh, unless we have that commitment and it's evidenced here in the council that this isn't going to be an issue that is now out of sight, out of mind. Uh, I am not going to live with my own conscience with the idea that because uh, uh, we didn't want to take the time to make this road safer, that something's going to happen to one of our children. Councillor Reed, I shared your concern when I listened closely to what Councillor Groff was saying. He said he would consider tonight, not at a later date. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Councilor Cogsell? Yes, this um, very colorful little pie chart that the police chief prepared for us is from 191 to the pre 192 to the present. So the statistics are supposed to be encompassing the most recent accidents, according to his title anyway. The narrative didn't have it, though. I'd like to see it broken down by number of instead of percentage like the other format. Okay, we have, I mean the one from 94. We have, I think we should ask the manager, are you going to basically pass this on to your staff to start gathering this information? I'm going to keep listening to the discussion and Thank save you. my comment to see what the, the sum of the total is. Thank you. Council Linnell? Yes, I know that uh, hmm? Councilor Groff, uh, last work session, uh, couldn't be there uh, for very good reasons. And that's when I uh, raised uh, some of the safety issues and the critical rate factor at that meeting. He wasn't there. And I apologize because I did not um, uh, get this document to him. Um, but I, I think, uh, I, and I implore him to, uh, to consider exercising his option to uh, revisit this issue before it gets cold because from what I've seen, I think there's all, all kinds of evidence that aesthetics is the number one issue, uh, is, is, is the biggest issue here. And unfortunately, I think it's taken, uh, safety has taken a back seat. I asked Council Groff to, to look at the, uh, uh, the information and take a recess, if you want, from the police chief. Doesn't mention the critical rate factor. And my understanding was when we talked about this at a work session before that, that that would be included in that package. It's not there. Uh, I don't see that, uh, I, I haven't seen that much uh, evidence in the last uh, couple of years that uh, anything but aesthetics was the number one issue. And, and I agree that's important, but I don't think it should come first. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, do we need to have a motion on this? Directing you to, where is that? Eventually. Okay. That's what I was trying to do. I just confirmed with the manager if the council would look at it, the um, draft motions with the option A, the sub A, before we finish with this item, if 
you know, following up on the vote that we've just had, there needs to be a vote sp explicitly directing him to inform MDOT, as is stated there, that we would not be moving forward um, with the proposed shore road bikeway project. Okay, we can't just leave it with what we did with option B. Madam Councilor Cogsell? Yes, that was my question before we got sidetracked, was to find out if we needed to formally direct him, and I will, I will do that in the form of a motion. Ordered to direct the town manager to inform the Maine Department of Transportation in writing that the town will not be moving forward with proposed shore road bikeway project and that the state and federal share of the project will not be used for the proposed project by the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. I would like to continue with the rest of this. Okay. As per the consensus of our workshop on to number sub B, to direct the town manager to work with the Director of Public Works to plan for the installation of two foot shoulders, and I would like that to be amended to say in a particular test area chosen by the police chief and the Department of Public Works along both sides of Shore Road in, the, in an area from Fort Williams Park to Pond Cove. That's not the whole stretch. Where are you? feel it's best. That the shoulders will not cause the relocation of any stone wall, the removal of any tree over three inches in diameter at its base. There should be no taking of land and proper drainage shall be maintained. The scheduling of the project shall be done as part of an overall roadway drainage plan to be presented and then voted upon by the council. The plan will provide cost estimates sufficient to ensure completion of the work and that the um, Council direct the manager to, in consultation with the chief of police and the Department of Public Works, for immediate installation of advisory signage as per his 8496 memorandum. Does anyone want to second that, or is it too long? Let's make sure the clerk is. <coughs> you all you need? Okay, thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second it. I'm just wondering if you want to clarify one point there as far as. <coughs> Councilor Jordan, I have a question for you. Oh, well, I was just informed that I was directing the police chief and the Department of Public Works to select the area, and that's improper delegation. Mm -hmm. Did you want to make some changes to your language? Direct you to direct them? We, we would work Stay. together, but it is, we, we usually, the council doesn't direct departments to do something. It's a violation of the charter uh, okay. without going through your You're still your directed chief. then. Yeah. <laughs> I get the message. So I would think that would be, as you corrected it, direct the manager mm -hmm. and he Picks his department to work on. You might want the fire chief there. Okay. Is there anything else, Councilor Jordan? No. All right. Here we have a motion and a second discussion. Councilor Linnell? Uh, let's get back to the cost. Um, if we take this to its logical conclusion, if we spend money and study the two foot shoulder, and then we go forward with a two-foot shoulder. My understanding from the last work session is that the town would more than likely have to bear the cost of the entire project now. Uh, and we talked about this. And if the project is $400,000 for four foot, uh, we concluded that uh, it was roughly, you know, it was reasonable to to assume that uh, two foot shoulders would be s roughly half that. So, but if we did that, there'd be no federal sharing. So, if this, if we went along with this line of thinking, we would be, ha have to spend $200,000 uh, of out-of-pocket Cape Elizabeth taxpayer money, whereas uh, if we got the four foot shoulders, we would only have to spend roughly $80,000.
So I see this as blowing money. Uh, uh, and I, I think if we're going to, uh, we should do it. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. If, if, if not, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. I don't, I don't think, uh, I, mean, I think we have to look beyond. And uh, if we look at two-foot shoulders, we're going to pay all of it. And I would also point out, we'd have to do a study of the entire length of the road. No, and we no. could do that at this time. And then it, we could decide next time around when we knew which tree or and so forth we had to move or would be sacrificed, uh, then we could decide if we wanted two foot or four foot. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reid. Councillor Linnell, in all fairness, ten years ago a town council said we want paved shoulders on Shore Road. We applied for a grant. Eventually we were accepted. And as of the vote right before this, tonight, we rejected it. So it doesn't matter what we approve tonight, two foot shoulders or what language we give to the town council, uh, excuse me, to the town manager, because the next town council doesn't have to do it anyway. So perhaps your concern or for not. Hmm. Council Council. Yes, the motion re read to just have a test strip in order to be able to determine whether or not the two feet would be beneficial. As far as moving trees or whatever, we already have that work done. We have a survey that shows where within the right-of-way the paved surface is and where all the trees and stone walls and everything uh, else have been done with the EC Jordan and then an actual tabulation by Hoffman, um, DeLuca, DeLuca Hoffman. DeLuca Hoffman. Um, so that we would not be doing the entire stretch of the road. We would be, um, we could start working with whatever strip they decide would be suitable. And if they come back and say that they don't think it's feasible, then we'll at least have some additional professional opinions as to whether or not it would work. Thank you. Councilor McGinty? Um, I was on the impression that we were going to do this, at least from the workshop, my, I was left with the impression we're going to do this as part of regular maintenance or regular roadway and drainage right. project as they as they come up that we weren't going to go out and create a project to do this but for instance if tide's edge is the place if that's what um uh, bob malley and, and the chief police and the town manager conclude is a good place to have a test strip that's where we do it that was my impression that they wouldn't go out and create a separate project of some sort that had to be completely uh, engineered and designed simply to do the two foot wide uh, shoulder. That's correct. Are you interested in putting some more limitations on this or giving further direction? Am I the only one that has, I guess I'm the only one that has that impression? Is that no, I have I'm, that no, impression. I'm seeing others not in agreement with you. Do you want to Change. First of all, if we could just check with the manager and see, are you ready to chime in? That makes sense. Help us help you. As, as I understand it, the motion now is to 